Dan Abbott, I'm making a short video for my parametric modeling class at Southern Maine Community College on how to create an exploded view from an assembly. This is a top level assembly. It has multiple sub-assemblies and you can see over here there are only three components. This I-beam that this trolley hangs on goes back and forth. The um, beam itself and that's the fixed part and then the hook that hangs from it down below. So when you do your drawings of this, I want an, an exploded assembly that shows with a bill of materials what each, each individual component is. You could do that at the trolley level. If you went down here, you could do this on this one. But the, doing it from the I-beam, it shows that it is um, how it's used, that it's hanging on the I-beam. This might be a little easier for somebody to see, so you can do either one. If we're going to do this one, I'd go over here to configurations. Now that you're normally here when you're looking at something like this, go to configurations tab, open that up. I've already got an exploded view in here, do I? Let me see what happens here. Explode. There it is. That's what an exploded view is. So what I'm going to do is um, create another exploded view, but you can see what the purpose of it is. So in order to get from here to here, What we need to do is to go back and create another exploded view. I'm going to collapse this and animate the collapse just the same way you animate the explode. Now, um, let's just make a new one. So we'll close that up, right click, or right click. I know I can make more than one. And I can, if I'm not currently in the little AVI um, controller up here. In other words, I was doing an animated explode. As long as that little window up there is open, I can't add anything else. So now if I go back, <coughs> right click and animate the collapse. Before I can do another exploded view, I have to close that out. Now if I right click on this, new exploded view will go make a new one. You have two types of movement, linear and radial. So we'll start with linear we'll get a few things out and what you have to do is simply have that blue window um, open go and grab a part like that cotter pin pick one of the directions you want it to go pick done if you want it to go in a different direction it's a little different than the behavior in the past you have to stop by doing done and then move it again the next time and pick done after every one now you've got a couple of possibilities here and by the way, this has, has uh, selected a subassembly parts selected. If you didn't do that, and then I went and picked this, I'd get the entire subassembly and have to move that out. So I'm going to make it so I can select any subassembly part, and I'm going to auto space this next one. Auto space allows you to make pick multiple things like those washers and then grab this and bring it out and you notice how they start to f come apart as you bring them out now I'm done with that now I think if I do this I can pick this whole thing and pull that out like this so it's coming out all at once so we'll do that just to get it out of the way pick done again now I'm going to go back and select subassembly parts and let's, um, let's just do one of these wheels here so I'll come over here grab that cotter pin, bring it out of the way. Done. Grab the washer, bring it over here, out of the way, done. Take the wheel, bring that here, done. Pick it again, move it up so it's out of the way, done. Don't forget to pick done each time. Now I'm gonna do a, a radial explode on this and I can do it by moving them away and then doing the radial explode or I can do the radial explode right in place. I think what I will do is pick this again and get it even further out of the way. Done. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna select each one of these. Now you can move this around because it's exploded in every view. So I'm just gonna pick every one of these. You don't need to hold the control key down for this. So now I'll pull that whole bundle out. Oop. You undo that. 
Okay, the reason I want to undo that is I want to clear the auto spacing. I don't want that auto space. Now that it's not auto space, the whole thing comes out at once. Have it go right here. I'm going to change the type here. First, I have to pick done. Now I can go up and change the type to radial. I'm going to pick these things again, putting a crossing window through them. Now I get the one bar, and as I do this, they open up like so. Pick OK. Oh, well, let's pick done. Pick done first. There we go. Now, that's N exploded view. So, you know, you look at it and say, well, I think everything is, looks pretty good there. It's uh, just where I'd want it to be. If not, then you go back and edit any of these steps. But let's just say this is what you want. And I, you're going to do whatever you think looks good. I'm not telling you that you have to do anything that looks exactly like this. I'm just showing you what the options are. Green check when you're done. Collapse. Looks like that. Animate explode. Looks like that. And it goes through the steps the way you did it. So if you wanted to show somebody how to assemble something or disassemble something, you could do that. So the purpose of this, and we'll just uh, collapse everything here. Close that out. So now I don't have either exploded view active. Now if I go and make a drawing from this, so make a drawing from this assembly, and probably I would put this on B size paper. That opens up and you can say, alright, what I want is an exploded view. Well, you have one exploded view showing right here, so you can bring that in in that orientation, or you can make a different orientation and then identify it as exploded. If I bring that in like that, I'm going to change the scale. Yeah, I think probably one to two would be better. Now here's the thing, you know, you look at this and thinking, well, I don't like the way that looks. It's just out there too far. And maybe you want to make a change in that so that it goes in a little bit further without actually doing it here because you can't. You can't move anything here. What I can do is go back, take a look at this exploded view, and modify it. So if I open up the assembly and I go to the exploded view. Oh, you know what? That's a different exploded view. Let's go back to the drawing. I say, you know what, as though you can actually tell me. So if we go to properties on the drawing here, we've got two different exploded views. That's the first exploded view. If I pick OK on this, now I go to the one I just made. So this one's actually going to fit in there a little better. Probably I would want the cotter pins a little bit closer. But that looks pretty good. You can also, on, you know, since we do actually have the capability of printing in color, you can do something like this. You wouldn't normally use color in a technical drawing. But this might be a little bit clearer. Now, you can go ahead and balloon it the way you did before. And when you do balloon, by the way, you can actually do an auto balloon. An auto balloon instead of a balloon just does the entire thing all at once. <clears throat> Normally, that's not what I like. I just as soon do the individual balloon. But you can do it either way. Because even if you do that, you're likely to have to, you know, you're going to have to go back over now and move those things because they're off the sheet. So, you know, you're still going to have to go in and grab this. By default, they're all magnetically grouped together, so they all line up. But you can see it'd be a little, well, you could bring that over here, I guess. And then you could go back and do the magnetic thing and bring them back out. Then you could have them straighten out if you want. That's a little more regular than I think it needs to be. Sometimes it's not always that clear. And you notice, by the way, it doesn't include everything. Um, it doesn't include these does it, no, doesn't include the um, bearings over here. So you still might have to go in and say, I want to balloon one of those. You balloon one of those, it should give you a different number. Notice 6 doesn't appear anywhere. Now it's there. doesn't balloon the cotter pin either. can't tell you exactly why that is, but it didn't have a 7. So we can put that in. Now that you've got the balloons on there, <clears throat> you go up to tables. So you want a bill of materials, which that's what a BOM is. You're going to select this view for the bill of materials, and now you've got indented, parts only, top level only. Depending on what you pick, the bill of materials is going to come in different. You can explore that a little bit. So here's all the parts. Put it up here like this. <clears throat> now every part that's visible in this and has a balloon number is listed right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way through. 
then you put the material. So you could do it this way, you could do the whole thing, do it starting up at the um, at the full assembly level where it's hanging off the I-beam, either one. Then go ahead and add your sheets and put the individual parts in. I think that's enough to get you going. It's also possible to put lines showing how the balloon, I mean how the explode takes place. That's very helpful when you're doing a manual of some kind and showing somebody how to assemble something. But for the purpose of this assignment, I simply want you to be able to do an explode and understand how it works.